Israeli Defense Minister Yov Gallant told troops that the military must be prepared for a stronger Hezbollah. During a visit to the Ramat David Air Base in northern Israel, he said Israel was moving its attention to Hezbollah. We are diverting forces, resources, energy towards the north, we have not forgotten the hostages and we have not forgotten our tasks in the south, this is our duty and we are performing it at the same time. He was speaking following simultaneous explosions of pagers owned by members of Hezbollah on Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday's bombings killed at least 12 people, including two children, and wounded some 2,800 others. At least nine people were killed and more than 300 people wounded in the second wave on Wednesday, the health ministry said. Hezbollah is stronger here, it's not Hamas. This is something else and we need to prepare for this accordingly and take it into account. The attacks, which were widely believed to be carried out by Israel targeting Hezbollah, have hiked fears that the two sides simmering conflict could escalate into all-out war. Gallant made no mention of the explosions of electronic devices but praised the work of Israel's army and security agencies, saying, the results are very impressive. המשמעות היא שאנחנו הולכים ומסיתים כוחות, משאבים, אנרגיה לכיוון צפון. לא שכחנו את החטופים ולא שכחנו את המשימות שלנו בדרום. זו חובה שלנו ואנחנו מבצעים אותה במקביל. ואנחנו צריכים להתאים את עצמנו, זה נכון לכולם, בוודאי למי שנמצא באוויר או שולט במה שנמצא באוויר, מפני שהאופוזיציה פה היא יותר חזקה. ו... זה לא חמאס, זה משהו אחר, וצריך להיערך לעניין הזה כמו שצריך, לקחת את זה בחשבון. אני אה, חושב שכאשר אתם מסתכלים על אה, תמונת המצב, צה"ל מביא הישגים מצוינים, יחד עם שב"כ, יחד עם מוסד, על כל הגופים ועל כל המסגרות, והתוצאות הן תוצאות מאוד מרשימות. ראש הממשלה, הרמטכ"ל, ראש השב"כ, ראש המוסד ושר הביטחון, כל מה שהם מייצגים, הכל בצורה משותפת, מוקדש למטרה אחת, להחזיר את התושבים. The number of Ukrainians and Russians killed or wounded in the two and a half years of war has reached approximately one million people. At the same time, the number of civilian deaths remains unknown since more than 8,000 people died during the Russian capture of Mariupol alone, according to Human Rights Watch. The Wall Street Journal reports that a confidential Ukrainian estimate at the beginning of the year put the number of Ukrainian servicemen killed at 80,000 and wounded at 400,000. Western intelligence estimates of Russian losses vary, with some putting the number of dead at nearly 200,000 and wounded at around 400,000. One of Vladimir Putin's motivations for launching the invasion in 2022 is to increase Russia's population by absorbing Ukrainians. According to government and demographer estimates, as a result of Russia's invasions and occupation of Ukrainian territory over the past 10 years, Ukraine has lost at least 10 million people to occupation or as refugees. Putin has long declared solving Russia's chronic demographic decline as a priority, and the Kremlin has since launched a campaign to russify the occupied territories, including kidnapping children and handing out Russian passports to Ukrainians. Modern Ukraine was once part of the Russian Empire, and Putin has repeatedly said he seeks to return the country to Moscow's rule. He denies Ukrainian identity and statehood, and claims that Ukrainians are part of the Russian nation. The war has had a devastating impact on Russia's domestic demography and labor market. Since the full-scale invasion began, more than 600,000 Russians have fled the country. These are mostly young professionals who could afford to move to other countries and start a new life. Russia's attack has had a catastrophic impact on Ukraine's population. The 2001 census counted 48 million residents. That number had fallen to 40 million in early 2022 before Russia invaded, according to Ukrainian demographers and government officials. Since the war began in February 2022, more than 6 million people have fled Ukraine and Russia has seized more land, according to the United Nations, reducing the total population in Kiev-controlled territory to 25 to 27 million. 
Alexander Gladden, a research fellow at the Tuka Institute of Demography, believes that before the full-scale invasion, there were 42 million people in Ukraine, and after, about 29 million.